This video is going to be the introduction to probabilities. We're going to use set notation, and set notation is a nice visual organized way to kind of look at a sample space. So what we have here to the right is a picture of billiard balls. Now we're not going to include the cue ball. The reason why is because it doesn't have a numerical value. But what we're going to do is take a look at the 15 balls inside of this uh, billiard set and we're going to take the numbers of those and we're going to make that part of our sample space. And our set, which is S, so this is going to be our set S, are going to have 15 elements. Each one of these um, numbers can, is an element. And I just pointed to the 13 for no good reason. I just wanted to show you that this is an element, so this is the set of elements. Now, to perform some probabilities, we're going to now make some subsets. We're going to take the set S and break it into a smaller group. We're going to start off with set A, which, and we're going to define A as the set of odd numbers. So we're going to make our little set notation symbol, and we're going to put our odd numbers here. And odd numbers are pretty easy to find. 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. By using sets, we can easily count the elements in the set. Like there's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight elements in set A. We're gonna define set B as the set of prime numbers. So what is a prime number? A prime number is any number greater than one. Any number, here's the greater than symbol, greater than one, that can be only divided by one and itself. So let's test the numbers one through 15 and see which numbers can only be divided by one in itself. Now one is not a prime and one is not prime because by definition, prime numbers are greater than one. Now two, can only be divided by one in itself. And the result, if it turns out to be a decimal, uh, would, would, be, would be bad. So we can only divide two by one in itself, so two is an element of our prime number set. Three can only be divided by one in itself. Now four, unfortunately, can be also divided by two. So four divided by two is two, so four is not a prime number. In fact, every single even will be taken out because of that reason. So let's test five. Five can only be divided by one in itself as seven. But nine can be divided by three. 11 can be divided by one in itself. And 13 can be divided by one in itself, but nothing else and 15 can be divided by both 5 and 3 and get either get the other number. So this is your set B, the set of prime numbers, and this is your set A. A and B are both subsets. They do share some commonalities, but they have some differences as well. So let's assume that all outcomes, like picking one of these, is equally likely and they're part of the uniform distribution we're going to talk about in chapter 5. So let's get used to the probability notation. This P of X, which you might see P, if someone says this aloud, it would be P of X. But this is really asking the probability of getting event X. And probability is defined as what you desire or want divided by the number of possibilities. Oops. All right. So let's take a look at probability of A. So what do we want? The P of A means that we want to find the probability of getting a ball from set A. Now, what we want is a 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15. So we want A out of the total set S. So how many elements are in set A? 
Well, we counted those up and we got eight. And we know there are 15 elements in set S, so eight divided by 15. I'd like to round to three decimals here. And the reason why is because this would make it really easy to convert to a percentage. So this is 53.3%. Probability of B, this is to pick a ball from set B out of the entire group S, and we're gonna assume replacement after each of these problems are gonna put all the uh, balls back into the box. So picking a prime number, you count the elements in that set, one, two, three, four, five, six, divided by 15, and that gives us a decimal 0.4. This fraction could be reduced if you divide the top and bottom by three. You could get a smaller fraction of two-fifths, which is 0.4. Now I'm gonna stylistically put a zero there because it's easier to talk about it as a percentage if that's the way. Now, what we mean by P8 this is not asking for um, you know, a quantity, it's just asking for the eight ball. It's asking for the element. So what is the probability of getting this, this eight ball, this one thing? Well, that's gonna be one out of 15. And if I type that into the calculator, I get a decimal of 0 0.0666666, but I'm gonna round that to six seven because of proper rounding rules. And then that would be 6.7%. If you read the rounding frequently asked questions, this is where you would see how you would um, properly round percentages. You could have written this as 40.0%, but that's pretty obvious that you know it's 40. Whereas I like to have one decimal beyond the percentage, the, in a percentage, I'd like to have one decimal beyond, because that just kind of tells me if this leans closer to seven or closer to six. Now for this problem, we're going to sneak, I'm going to sneak in a vocabulary word. We're going to introduce a little bit more later. Uh, we're going to introduce it later formally. The word not is kind of saying, I want everything that is not in B. So don't look at set A, just look at B and say, okay, I want all of the elements that are not in B. And that would be one, four, six, eight, nine, twelve, and 15. Now if you were counting as I was doing it, and hopefully I didn't miss any, you would notice there are nine possibilities out of 15. So if I divide this, this gives me 0.6, and I'll stylistically add a zero, which gives me 60%. Now the word I'm going to use here is going to be formally defined later, and it's called complement. So for example, this is the probability of B, and this is the complement of B. So this is B and this is what is not B. So complement is like just taking everything that isn't in a set, a set. And if you look at the set and its complement, both percentages and decimals will add up to 100% or one respectively. Okay, so we have some more inequality notation here. This inequality notation means I want a ball that is less than 16. I want to pick a ball that's less than 16. Well, what's cool about that is that there are 15, all 15, out of the 15, they, uh, so getting, a, getting that is a possibility. Now remember, we're not choosing the cue ball. The cue ball is not part of our set. So picking a number that's less than 16, or I could have said less than or equal to 15, both would have given me the same answer of one or 100%. Now what I would like in this problem is I like uh, something that's bigger than 15. Another way to write this, I could have said X is greater than or equal to 16. Well, there's no chance of picking a ball that is greater than or equal to 15, or greater than or equal to 16 or greater than 15. So zero divided by 15 is zero or 0%. So number five was a certainty, number six was an impossibility. So what I have here is the probability continuum. So what I want in the middle is even chance. So in the center of my probability is when you have an even chance of getting one or the other. So this is called the 50-50 or we'll put down this as 50% as a decimal. Now, over here to the right, this is called a certainty. 
certainty. And this is going to be at our 100% chance ha of happening, or one. So number five was a certainty. It was going to happen because there's no way it could not have happened. And then over here at this, we're gonna put a zero, and this is impossible. So over to the right is a certainty, over zero is the impossibility. So this was the probability of x greater than 15, and over here this is the probability of x less than 16. Now what we can do is kind of check and see where everything else was, and I'm going to go backwards up here. The probability of not b was 60%, so that was about right here, so this is the probability of not b. Now what I just used is a little tick mark, and that tick mark also means not, and this will be formally um, uh, formally talked about in the next video. Then we're going to look at the probability of 8, which is only 6.7%. Well, it's not impossible. The probability of 8 is not impossible. It's just down here, it's more improbable. So improbability is to the left, and all the way to the right would be probability. Like just, it's more probable, more, more of a chance of it happening and this is a much less chance of happening and then in the middle is your even chance then we have only two more to go the picking from set B was about 40 percent and then picking set A was 53 percent so it's a little bit more than an even chance but not as good as picking something that was not in set B and in the next video we're going to continue this basic probability with this example